Follow the drinking god. Follow the drinking god. For the old man is coming. Hello, and welcome back to the story of transatlantic slavery from 1619 to 1833. This part of the documentary will be about William Wilberforce. I will talk about his life and mainly about his role in the abolition of slavery in Britain. Let's start with a bit of background information. Wilberforce was a deeply religious English Member of Parliament and social reformer who was very influential in the abolition of the slave trade and eventually slavery itself in the British Empire. William Wilberforce was born on 24th of August 1759 in Hull. The son of a wealthy merchant, he studied at Cambridge University where he began a lifelong friendship with William Pitt the Younger, who later became PM. In 1780 he became Member of Parliament for Hull, later became a representative for Yorkshire. His out of control lifestyle changed completely when he became an evangelical Christian and in 1790 joined a leading group called the Clapham Sect. His Christian faith prompted him to become interested in social reform, particularly the improvement of factory conditions in Britain. The abolitionist Thomas Clarkson had an enormous influence on Wilberforce. He and others were campaigning for an end to the trade in which British ships were carrying black slaves from Africa in appalling conditions to the West Indies as goods to be bought, sold and treated like animals. Wilberforce was persuaded to lobby for the abolition of the slave trade and for 18 years he regularly introduced anti-slavery motions in Parliament. The campaign was supported by many members of the Clapham sect and other abolitionists who raised public awareness of their cause with pamphlets, books, rallies and petitions. In 1807 the slave trade was finally abolished but this did not free those who were already slaves. It was not until 1833 that an act was passed giving freedom to all slaves in the British Empire. As you can see I got the great displeasure of seeing this spiked brass collar which some slaves may have worn. There are two possible reasons for this monstrosity to be used. Firstly, owners rarely allowed their slaves to be baptised or to take a Christian first name and surname. This was to maintain their inferior state as property. Some owners also made them wear brass neck collars, like a dog, with their name on it. The other option is that it uh, it may be to stop mutinies on ships. Not only would it slow them down, but if they were to try to take it off, the spikes would dig into their hands. On this, the spikes do not look so bad, but in the time they were properly used, they would have been razor sharp. It was men like Will William Wilberforce and Thomas Clarkson that stopped the brass collar. And here I have an entry from a, a, an unknown man about a part, the last day of the slave trade. And here it is. The scene was extraordinary in the British House of Commons. The date was February 23rd, 1807. Supporters of the slave trade had their say, but now others were clamouring for the opportunity to speak for the motion for abolition. Finally, an eloquent speech was given in tribute to William Wilberforce himself, which brought the house to its feet. After years of discouragement in which pleas for abolition were scorned or ignored, the motion passed by an overwhelming vote of 283 to 16. William Wilberforce's battle had spanned 20 years. William Wilberforce used a number of tactics to achieve the abolition of slavery including making motions in Parliament and doing different things with the Clapham sect. He also has a very famous speech, which he read himself, which I will read an extract of now. When I turn myself to these thoughts, I take courage. I determine to forget all my other fears and I march forward with a firmer step in the full assurance that my cause will bear me out and that I shall be able to justify upon the clearest imp principles, every resolution in my hand, the avowed end of which is the total abolition of the slave trade. I wish exceedingly, in the outset, to guard both myself and the house from entering into the subject with any sort of passion. It is not their passions I shall appeal to, I ask only for their cool and impartial reason.
and I wish not to take them by surprise, but to deliberate, point by point, upon every part of this question. I mean not to accuse anyone, but to take the shame upon myself, in common, indeed, with the whole Parliament of Great Britain, for having suffered this horrid trade to be carried out on under of the, their authority. Trying to abolish slavery was not the only thing Wilberforce did. He also tried to renew society, including the organisation of the Society for the Suppression of Vice in 1802. He was closely involved with the Royal Society of Pre Prevention to Cruelty of Animals. He was also instrumental in encouraging Christian missionaries to go to India. When, once he had uh, finished with the slave trade, he retired from politics in 1825 and died on the 29th of July, 1833. He was buried near his friend Pitt in Westminster Abbey. Although these men, such as William Wilberforce and Thomas Clarkson, did amazing work, it is unsure whether they were the main reason why slave trade was stopped. There are there is controversy about whether it was be just because the the profit in it was no longer and it was just a waste of money. There's two arguments. There's a book called Econocide by Seymour Drescher, which is very famous, and that's all about how there was no profit left in uh, slave trade, so it was just stopped because of that. Whereas this book by Roger Anstey was says it the exact opposite and it says that uh, all the he looked through all the records and it was at the height of uh of the profit and it was because of men like William Wilberforce and Thomas Clarkson that uh, the slave trade was stopped this this book has a lot more to back it up a conicide is much smaller so I, I think this is a more reliable book.